All right, welcome back to CW's Garage. Today, we're gonna be putting the AC compressor on there and see if we can't get the core support mounted up in there. You know, with the Tejas steel motor mounts, you know, you'll, you'll have to trim it up. You may, you may not, you may have to, whatever. I'll go into more detail whenever we get after working on that. So keep watching, it's always a good time here. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, yep, that's what we're doing. Just keep on trying. It wasn't a super eventful day. I was just buttoning stuff up, you know? I need to make a checklist is what I need to do. But uh, I need to do the exhaust, you know, at least put the flanges on there so I can put the O2 sensors on there. Get those wired, those wires where they need to go connected and everything, get the transmission uh, wiring harness hooked up. I still hadn't done that, but that's literally a couple seconds where the climbing are there and doing it. Uh, getting pretty close to being able to put the core support back on, so that'll be fun. And I need to button up the rest of the interior. I need to hook up the... I need to get power so I can figure out which wire I need to hook up to the torque converter lockup switch. I need to hook up the OBD2 port. You know, there's it's just uh, a lot of ins, a lot of outs. A lot of what have you is. This is a very complicated case mod. You know, a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have you. Yeah, we're getting closer to the end of it. Once I get the core support back on, I can put the air box and everything in, put all the light wiring back up, horns on, all that stuff. AC condenser, radiator, radiator fan. There's something else I'm forgetting, but yeah. We are, we're on the downhill slope, I think. So I need to, I don't know what I need to do. I need to quit talking and get back to work is what I need to do. All right, so uh, just dropping the motor on the motor mounts that I got today. I got the Tejas Steelworks ones, and it took a little while to get them, and it, I get it. You know, we all have issues. I'm in Texas, so I get their problem that they had, supply chain issue with, not even, I guess everybody with the supply chain. I'm tired of hearing that f***ing word. Winter storms hit them, so they were down for a little while. They were in the middle of doing some maintenance on their uh, equipment and all that stuff, making it, but let me just show you these things are made for these trucks. They, they put the work into it. I, I just, I want y'all to see how easy this thing fell in place. I just lifted it back up. So I'm gonna drop it back in. So just watch. I'm telling you, it's impressive. Look at this. Well, they've got my business. Well, they got my business twice because whenever we do the Suburban, take the big block out of it and put the six liter in there, we're using the Tejas mounts because I bought two pairs whenever I bought these ones. If you're gonna spend the money on LS motor mounts, they're $100. That is the best $100 you're gonna spend on your swap. All right, so uh, earlier we talked about, I was gonna get some other things buttoned up and stuff like that. Uh, got the. Uh, spark plugs in, plug wires on, hooked up some vacuum. This is for your AC stuff for the, wow, brain fart there. Blend doors and stuff like that for your heater so you, you know, not just leaving it on floor, defrost, all that stuff. If you don't have one of these little spinner handlers, dealing with jigs, they're pretty fantastic. This is an old Craftsman here. These have a torque spec and actually these are like a two-step torque spec. <clears throat> and usually, generally, I'll just run stuff down with the electric ratchet, but... I mean, people have been using these for years, obviously, that they wouldn't have made them for as long as they do. They're good for running uh, head bolts down, stuff like that. Anything that you don't want to tighten down real quick and over-torque it, or, you know, if it's got a torque spec, you know, these are these are fantastic for the speed wrenches. But, uh, yeah, anyway. I'm going to torque these down and now I'm going to move on to getting the accessories on. I um, notched the frame a little bit here for the AC compressor. It's like the lines are still too close, so I'm going to have to do a little more notching. Shouldn't be too much though, but as you can see, I don't really want to squeeze in there real easily. But, <clears throat> you know, they kind of knew this may have been a possibility. Every truck's pretty much different, so... Some people get to put it on there and they don't have a lick of problems, but this is where we're at. So, 
skip the old dust wheel out and go to town a little bit more because that bolt hits there and you know whenever your engines when you rev up your engine is going to twist back and forth so we need to clearance it we'll just kind of mark it up a little bit yeah see this bolt you can't get it you can't even get it in in the back with that on there i hate to cut anything out of frame but at least it's the front it's in front of the engine so it's not too terrible to do that She made one that spun in reverse because holding it at that angle from that side just ain't fun. Uh, maybe get a flat disc and clean it up, I guess, as much as I don't want to. Need a die grinder is what I really need. For a pneumatic die grinder, my dig, good dig. Fun, fun, fun. Let's see how it fits now. Hopefully good news, right? This should, should work in theory. All right. I mean, I guess whenever I tighten the pin it down, it should keep it up away from the frame a little bit. So I think we're probably okay there. Okay, well, I guess I will go ahead and put the other hose fitting on and hook up the lines and then we'll bolt it down and see what happens. See if she likes it, huh? I should clean up the frame and paint it before I put that on so we may stop so I can shoot a little paint on there and deburr it and all that whatnot. I just don't like it to have sharp edges. No one wants that. All right, here's where we're at. Uh, got the compressor on and the other accessories, like I was saying. Here's how much that it ended up trimming it out. And I just took the lines and kind of bent them up a little bit. I didn't get too crazy with it. I'll just kind of give you a demonstration of how I did it. These, you know, they have a single bolt for the connector or whatever. So if you pry up on that, there's a good, these are real thick aluminum. I doubt you'll bend them. But what I did was just put a little tension against those fittings from the frame. And then I would kind of, anywhere I could get room or whatever, I'd kind of, just pry on it a little bit up under here a little you know they're pretty they're aluminum so they're they're pliable i went ahead and i didn't get a new tension or, or idler pulley i just put a new bearing in there because a bearing is 12 dollars and they want you know 29 dollars for a pulley it's like well there's nothing wrong with the pulley got the bracket for the this is like for jumping it off and stuff like that or tying in to accessories or whatever get that on um I guess we'll go over this uh if you're doing an ls swap and you're keeping the factory style air conditioning where it's coming it's got the vacuum line comes out there's a there's a little vacuum port here and it's got this little guy you just snap that off and you can hook your vacuum line to that <clears throat> it goes to your uh, vacuum canister and to the check valve here's the check valve i'm pretty sure this is direction this this is the direction that the check valve needs to go um we'll find out whenever the blend doors don't work right right which is it's easy enough to swap around I, I need to get some more hose to run over to the vacuum canister that one's the hose is real dry and old you don't want to use that i did i was able to keep the factory jack in its place that's pretty neat this isn't the prettiest you know fuse relay mount ecu mount but it gets the job done let's see i'm gonna try my best to use because it had, you know, the tranny cooler came to like an auxiliary one up here and then went to the radiator, you know, air to liquid cooler or whatever. Try to use use that style. I need to, I still need to figure out what fittings I need to adapt to the C10. Uh, I got the 730 radiator, the big block radiator. So I need to do that, figure out what fittings go there. Um, what else do we need to do? What else? You know, what I need to do about the drive shaft uh what else you know there's a laundry list of things you you know it's it's not plug and play as it should be as or as people expect it to be all right see how much of a booger i made for myself by putting the battery tray in i should probably just take it out now but i'm a glutton for punishment so let's just see 
Okay, this is the way it came out. So this is the way it's supposed to go back in, isn't it? I think, yeah. Tilt it back toward the engine and then pull it back out like that. So that's... All right, we're just gonna take the battery tray out. Whatever, there ain't no sense in fighting it. That's why I was taking it back out. I wanted to put rib nuts in there. That's right. Just go ahead and get that out for now. Okay, now what, guys? Now what? Okay. How did that get around that? Okay. Watch it. It would just come right out. That's that would be my luck. Oh come on. Okay. Lean back. Okay, now I gotta find those body mount bushings. All right, got the bushings rounded up and went ahead and threw some paint on. Let's see if we can get them in there. I think that was less of a struggle than I anticipated. <laughs> so, this is exciting stuff here. It was a lot harder to get the core support off than it was to put it on. I can tell you that. <laughs> Whoop. That ain't gonna ride, is it? Let's climb in here. Dude. And then we got all the ones on the bottom. The ones from the wheel. Well. See if we can get that to line up a little better there. I don't know if we can. We can certainly try. About where it was out of the factory, really. So there's that. Let's get these outer ones aligned. I can put the inside one in. Oh, what did I do? Well, that's not good. So we'll have to put a rib nut in that one, I guess. much as it wasn't very fun getting the core support out it was definitely worth doing it for the fact that it was a lot easier to put the engine in without having to worry about tearing anything up and having to have it swan dive in there that's just a pain I kind of think I should leave that a little loose for the sake of uh, putting the crossover Bar grill filler piece, bumper filler, crossover major. I guess we'll just look and see. I need to run wiring too before I put that filler piece in, I guess. I guess I should wipe this all off and put a quick coat of paint over some of it first. Eight minutes. All right, let's get this wiring harness run back across there. Got that paint dried up and I cleaned up the filler piece. So we need to run the wires, then put the filler panel in. I guess the ground wire goes through there. I don't remember. Looks like it would, right? Do this little clippy dippy do. This is gonna break off as soon as I snap it in place, probably. It's holding on by a thread. All right, that goes up to the herd. Can't remember if it went, it probably went under it, yeah. Can't imagine it would go around, would it? Where is this plug? Turn signal up here. Make, no, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, this has got to stretch further than I thought. Oh, yeah, what an idiot. What a loser.
All right, that looks better, huh? There we go. Look at that. Just look at it. Just look at it. They must have made loom out of better material in the 80s than they did in the 2000s, because this stuff's very good shape. And that stuff I pulled off of that dang 2000 Chevy was just brittle. It crumbled apart. I got a box full of it. I still haven't managed to make myself throw away for whatever reason. It's like it's out of sight, out of mind. Bumper filler piece in now. Now this one down here is kind of stripped down, so we will have to get what's missing the retainer blind nut thing. I don't know what we're gonna do there. Cause it's too big a hole to put a rib nut in. What we're we gonna do there? See, it's missing the blind fastener hole dealy majig so this is gonna be quite the struggle ah it's the fun times of cramming your hand into awkward places okay just zip it down Good deal, good deal, pickle, good deal. Stand up straight. You need to get better posture. GoPro mount. There we go. That's why you leave the little dirt rings there. So you know where it was before. All right, let's get the battery box put back in. Oh, there's that nut I was looking for. I thought I lost. I do remember this vaguely not lining up perfect. And I had to persuade it into place, I think. There we go. It's been persuaded. There we go. Alright, that battery box is mounted. We're not going to do the other one yet, just because just more stuff to be in the way whenever we do the air condition lines, cooling lines, all that, all that fun jazz. Guess we can get the condenser and set her down in there and see what it looks like. The aftermarket ones don't quite fit as well as the OEM ones, it seems. So that's nice. I think I have to move that bushing over or something. I don't know how they're going to claim that that's the factory. You know, it's like a original. Yeah, no. No, it doesn't. It's not near wide enough to cover that spread there. I mean, they couldn't have made this son of a gun like a tiny bit wider. There. a new hole for this one I think yeah that used to be over there way off now okay well that's crammed into place at least so all right so we got the core support installed AC compressor mounted so we will be putting the rest of the stuff in the radiator we'll do electric fans next uh, all that fun jazz that's what's coming up in the next video and just remember if you're not doing it twice probably not doing it right